Hey YouTube, I'm coming at you with a nice pump and we're going to discuss evolving rep ranges again but this time I'm going to give practical examples taken from my training because I understand that because of the concept is so vast and it involves so many possibilities it can be a little bit tricky to actually understand what would work and what wouldn't. So let me say first that I usually don't give um, pre-cooked answers, I don't like that. I like to give pointers, keys of comprehension, and then it's up to you guys to decide what you want to make with it. And there are certain ways to make evolving references work that I haven't discovered yet, that I might think are not good, but that you will make work, which is why I don't want to confine you within what I do. That being said, I'm going to quickly share with you my favorites and the way they integrate in my program so that you can get a better understanding on how they work live. I sort of covered the topic when I covered my program in the Natural Hypertrophy playlist, but I didn't really dwell on it. So let's get to it. The first one I really like is two uh, to five reps of one to three sets. And the way I schedule the evolution is week one is two reps, week two is three reps, then two reps with a pause in the middle of three to four minutes. Then it's three reps, two reps, uh, four reps, three reps, two reps, and then it's five reps, four reps, three reps. So as you can see, it just goes up one rep, but you have another set that stacks itself afterwards. What does that mean and how does my program evolve around that? Well, if I'm doing only two reps of heavy weight with high intensity, I'm going to have to find volume somewhere else in the training to complement it. If I'm going to be doing the day where I do five, four, three, this is a ton of volume, especially if I do it on something like a deadlift, which is what I do. I use that prep range for the deadlift and the overhead press because I feel like these, for me, benefit the most from that amount of intensity and they stay very safe. Uh, I don't risk any injuries going that low with that high of an intensity percentage. But because they are pulls from the floor and a vertical press, they are both compound movements. You can apply evolving represents to whatever you want, but the more tonnage you move on a lift related to the body part you use to move it, of course, the more cautious you have to be about it. If you decide to go the route of the two to five for th two, one to three sets, understand that this is going to push you into high intensity ranges. Let's take an example from the other side of the spectrum. I really like doing four to eight reps for one to three sets on my squats and my bench. Why? Because I feel like for me, these lifts really suffer from form breakdown when I push the intensity too much. And therefore they turn into something I do not want and they don't target the muscles I want. So I immediately select at the very start an evolving rep range that is going to push me into higher volume, lower intensity. And the way the evolution work is First week, four reps, second week, five, four, then six, five, four, seven, five, three, eight, six, four. And if you think about what I just said, you can clearly see that there is going to be one week that is going to be strikingly more difficult than the others. It's going to be week three. The six, five, four is a massive jump from five, four. It is the biggest jump in tonnage of that evolving rep range. That is something you have to pay attention to. When you program your evolving rep range, you have to have an eye for what is going to be the most difficult session. Because on that session, you better make sure that the days before did not deplete you so that you can hit that number. And this is also the type of session that, in my opinion, benefits from retaking it. Meaning that don't be afraid of redoing the 654 AKA whatever evolving rep range you're going to select that it's going to be the peak tonnage because this is going to allow you to keep your form and technique clean, keep the tonnage stable. The worst thing uh, and the worst thing that can happen with evolving rep ranges is you do not want to regress. Or the advantage of the evolving rep range is set up entirely around the ability to keep progressing. So if you regress, you should have just done a three by five because you are also lacking with the evolving rep range. And I'm going to make a video about it, detailing the defaults of it. You are lacking the, the rocket 
uh, the skyrocketing progression that other rep schemes offer. So you cannot regress on them. You cannot allow that to happen. Because of the way they're set up, the progression should be so smooth that you should never fail. I have done, I've done serious uh, evolving rep ranges within a program that I've taken some care into programming for about a year and a half. I can count on the fingers of one hand the amount of time where I missed a weight I wanted to hit. If I go in the gym and I say I'm getting six reps, I'm getting six reps. It never failed me, which is why I'm so uh, openly promoting evolving rep ranges because I think they're the future. Now, I'm going to end the video on this. I just explained to you a certain way to make an evolving rep range work. It, this, what I just did is the equivalent of showing you one way to solve a Rubik's Cube, then undoing it and giving it to you. If you try to do it the same way I did it, you're not going to get the same results. And it also means that there are thousands of ways to program. The way I do it, where I do one to three sets, and for example, four to eight reps, these are parameters of the evolving rep ranges that uh, work together. You can just have reps that evolve and keep the sets the same. You can have just uh, sets that evolve and keep the, rank, the reps uh, uh, similar. It's all up to you. It's all going to work as long as the volume and intensity manipulation is there. If you see that you're lacking flexibility with something that should be flexible, like an evolving rep range, you're doing something wrong. I will make a video, a Q&A video about evolving rep ranges where I'm going to take examples that you guys give me and I'm going to discuss them on the channel. So you can send them if you want. I will not be answering them by hand, but I will collect them and in two months or so, I will make the Q&A. I have two other videos set up for evolving rep ranges because I do think it's a topic that suffers uh, because of, of its infinity of possibilities. Some, somehow suffers of its flexibility and openness. So I want to give you guys as much as I can so I can guide you on the right path. That being said, I'm of course not going to baby you through it. So I have two other videos set up for that, plus the Q&A, you can look forward to it. As always, thank you for watching the channel and have a good day.